in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray, O Lord, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful. Grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise, and ever rejoice in his consolation through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lady Seat of Wisdom, pray for us. The moment of the consecration, the moment of the most marvelous of miracles had arrived. Behind the right side of the Archbishop appeared And among them are the souls of your relatives who already enjoy the presence of God. Then I saw her, exactly to the right of the Archbishop, a step behind the celebrant. She was suspended a little off the floor, kneeling on some very fine, transparent, but at the same time luminous fabric as crystalline water. The Holy Virgin, with hand joined, was looking attentively and respectfully at the celebrant. She spoke to me from there, but silently, directly to the heart, without looking at me. It surprises you to see me standing a little behind the Archbishop, does it not? This is how it should be. With all the love my son gives me, he has not given me the dignity that he has given to the priests of being able to perform the daily miracles with my hands as they do with their priestly hands. Because of this, I feel a deep respect for priests, for the
I remain with the angels because I'm always with him. To see that beautiful countenance of the mother at that moment of the words, holy, 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 as well as, as all the others with their radiant faces, with hands joined, awaiting that miracle which repeats itself continuously, was to be heaven itself. Rose began to grow and became enormous and upon it the marvelous face of Jesus appeared looking at his people. until I had my forehead on the floor, as did all the angels and the blessed from heaven. Perhaps for a fraction of a second, I wondered how Jesus was taking on the body of the celebrant, and at the same time, he was inside the host. And as he lowered the host, it returned to Immediately, the Monsignor said the words of the consecration of the wine. And as the words were being said, lightning appeared from the heavens and in the background. The walls and ceiling of the church disappeared. All was dark, but for that brilliant light from the altar. Suddenly, suspended in the air, I saw Jesus crucified. I saw him from the head to the lower part of the chest. The cross beam of the cross was sustained by some large, strong hands. From within this resplendent light, a small light, like a very brilliant, very small dove, came forth and flew swiftly all over the church. It came to rest on the shoulder of the Archbishop, who continued to appear as Jesus because I could
able to contemplate his face, beating arms and torn flesh. I have said to you before that the Lord is not constrained by time and space. At the moment of consecration, all the assembly is taken to the foot of Calvary and the instant of the crucifixion of Jesus. I ask everybody to kneel and try to live with their hearts and with all their sensibility that they're capable of this privilege that the Lord grants us. When we were going to pray the Our Father, I want you to pray with the deepest profundity which you can summon. At this moment, bring to mind that person or persons which have done you the greatest harm during your life, so that you embrace them close to your bosom and tell them with all your heart, person is worthy of that peace, then the person will receive it and feel better for it. If that person is not capable of opening up to that peace, the peace will return to your heart. But I do not want you to receive nor offer peace when you are not capable of forgiving and feeling that peace in your heart first. Be careful of what you do continued the Lord. You repeat in our Father, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. If you are capable of forgiving but not forgetting as some people say, you are placing conditions upon the forgiveness of God. You are saying, you forgive me only as I am capable of forgiving, but no more. I do not know how to explain my pain at the realization of how much we can hurt the Lord, and also how much we can injure ourselves by holding on to so many grudges, bad feelings, and unflattering things that are born from our own prejudices and oversensitivities. 
I forgave from the bottom of my heart and asked for forgiveness from all the people whom I had hurt at one time or another in order to feel the peace of the Lord. The celebrant said, Give us peace and unity and then the peace of the Lord be with all of you. I could truly feel the embrace of the Lord in that light. It was him who embraced me, giving me his peace because in that moment I had been able to forgive and remove from my heart all grief against other people. That is what Jesus wants, to share that moment of joy, hugging us and wishing us his peace. The moment of the celebrant's communion arrived. There, I once again noticed the presence of all the priests next to the Mosinga. When he took communion, the Virgin Mary said, This is the moment to pray for the celebrant and the priest who accompany him. Repeat together with me, Lord, bless them, sanctify them, help them, purify them, love them, take care of them, and support them in your love. Remember, all priests of the world, pray for all the consecrated souls. Dear brothers and sisters, that is the moment in which we should pray for them, because they are the church, as we, the laity, are also. Many times we, the laity, demand so much from the priests, but we are unable to pray for them, to understand that they are human, and to comprehend and appreciate the solitude that many times can surround a priest. We should understand that the priests are people like ourselves, and they need to be understood, to be cared for. They need affection and attention from us because they are giving their life to each one of us, as Jesus did, by being consecrated to him. The Lord wants the people of the flock that God has entrusted to him to pray and help in the sanctification of their pastor. Someday, when we are on the other side, we will understand the marvels that the Lord has done, giving us priests who help us to save our souls. The people began to leave their pews on their way to communion. The great moment of the encounter had arrived, the Lord said to me. Wait a moment. I want you to observe something. An interior impulse made me to raise my eyes towards the person who was going to receive communion on the tongue from the hands of the priest. When the priest placed the sacred host on her tongue, a flash of light, like a very golden white light, went through the entire person, first through her back, then surrounding her from the back, around her shoulders, and then her head. The Lord said, This is how I myself rejoice in embracing a soul who comes with a clean heart to receive me. The tone of voice of Jesus was that of a happy person. I was astonished to see my friend return to her pew surrounded by light, embraced by the Lord. I thought of the marvel that we miss so many times by going to receive Jesus with our small or large offenses when it should be a feast. Many times we say that there are no priests to whom to go to confess at any given moment. But the problem is not about confessing at each moment, but the problem resides in our ease of falling into evil again. On the other hand, in the same way that we make an effort to search for a beauty parlor or men search for a barber when we have a party, we have also to make an effort to seek a priest when we need to remove all that dirt from ourselves. We must not have the audacity to receive Jesus at any moment with our heart full of ugly things. 
When I went to receive the communion, Jesus told me, The Last Supper was the moment of the greatest intimacy with my own. During that hour of love, I established what could be thought of as the greatest act of lunacy in the eyes of men, that of making myself a prisoner of love. I established the Eucharist, and I wanted to remain with you until the end of the centuries, because my love could not bear that you remained orphaned, you whom I loved more than my life. I received the host which had a different flavor. It was a mixture of blood and incense that inundated me entirely. I felt so much love that the tears ran down my cheeks without me being able to stop them. When I returned to my seat while kneeling, the Lord said to me, Listen. A moment later, I began to hear the prayers of the lady who was seated in front of me, who had just received communion. What she said without opening her mouth was more or less like this. Lord, remember that we are at the end of the month, and I do not have money to pay rent, the car payment or the children's school. You have to do something to help me. Please make my husband stop drinking so much. I cannot bear any more of his being intoxicated so often, and my youngest son is going to repeat this year again, if you do not help him. He has exams this week. And do not forget our neighbor who must move. Let her do it right away. I cannot stand her anymore, and so on and so on. Jesus said in a sad tone, Did you take note of her prayer? Not a single time did she tell me that she loves me. Not a single time did she thank me for the gift that I had given her by bringing down my divinity to her poor humanity in order to elevate her to me. Not a single time has she said, Thank you, Lord. There has been a litany of requests. And so are almost all those who came to receive me. I have died for love and I am risen. For love, I await each one of you and for love, I remain with you. But you do not realize that I need your love. Remember, I am the beggar of love in this sublime hour for the soul. Do you all realize that he, love, is begging for our love and we do not give it to him? Moreover, we avoid going to that encounter with the love of loves, with the only love who gives of itself in a permanent oblation. When the celebrant was going to give the blessing, the Holy Virgin said, Be attentive, take care. You do any old sign instead of the sign of the cross. Remember that this blessing could be the last one that you will receive from the hands of a priest. You do not know when leaving here if you will die or not. You do not know if you will have the opportunity to receive a blessing from another priest. Those consecrated hands are giving you the blessing in the name of the Holy Trinity. Therefore, make the sign of the cross with respect, as if it was the last one of your life. How much we miss in not understanding and not participating every day at the Holy Mass. Why not make an effort to begin the day a half hour earlier and run to the Holy Mass and receive all the blessings that the Lord wants to pour over us? I'm aware that because of their obligations, not everybody can attend daily Mass, but at least two or three times a week. So many avoid Mass on Sundays with the smallest excuse 
that they have a child or two or ten and therefore they cannot attend Mass. How do people manage when they have other important types of commitments? They take all their children or take turns and the husband goes one hour and the wife another but they carry out their duty to God. We have time to study, to work, to entertain, to rest. But we do not have the time at least on Sunday to go to Holy Mass or indeed every day to go to Holy Mass. Jesus asked me to remain with him a few minutes more after Mass had finished. He said, Do not leave in a hurry after Mass is over. Stay a moment in my company and enjoy it and let me enjoy yours. As a child, I have heard someone say that the Lord remained with us for five or ten minutes after communion. I asked him at this moment, Lord, truly, how much time do you stay with us after communion? I suppose the Lord must have laughed at my silliness because he answered, At the time that you want to have me with you, if you speak to me all day long, offering me some words during your chores, I will listen to you. I am always with you. It is you who leaves me. You leave the Mass and the day of obligation ends. You kept the day of the Lord and it is now finished for you. You do not think that I would like to share your family life with you, at least that day. In your homes, you have a place for everything and a room for each activity. A room to sleep, another to cook, another to eat and so on. Which place have you made for me? It should not be a place where you only have image which collects dust all the time but a place where at least five minutes a day the family meets to give thanks for the day and for the gift of life, to ask for their needs of the day, to ask for blessings, protection, health. Everything has a place in your homes, except me. Men plan their day, their week, their semester, their vacations. They know what day they are going to rest. What day they'll go to the movies or to a party or visit grandmother or the grandchildren, the children, their friends, and to their amusements. How many families say at least once a month, This is the day for our turn to go and visit Jesus in the tabernacle and the whole family comes to talk to me. How many sit down in front of me and have a conversation with me? telling me how it has been since the last time, telling me their problems, the difficulties they have, asking me about what they need, making me part of these things. How many times? I know everything. I read even the deepest secrets of your hearts and minds. But I enjoy your telling me about your life. You're letting me participate as a family member, as your most intimate friend. Oh, how many graces does man lose by not giving me a place in his life? When I remained with him that day, and on many other days, he continued to give us teachings. Today, I want to share with you this mission that he has entrusted to me. Jesus said, I wanted to save my creatures because the moment of opening the door to heaven has been impregnated with too much pain. Remember that not even one mother has fed her child with her own flesh. I have gone to that extreme of love to communicate my merits to all of you. The Holy Mass is myself prolonging my life and my sacrifice on the cross among you. 
without the merits of my life and my blood. What do you have with which to come before the Father? Nothing. Misery and sin. You should exceed in virtue the angels and archangels because they do not have the joy of receiving me as nourishment like you do. They drink a drop from the spring, but you have the grace of receiving me. You have the whole ocean to drink. The other thing that the Lord spoke about with pain concerned people who encounter him out of habit, of those who have lost their awe of each encounter with him. That routine turns some people so lukewarm that they have nothing new to tell Jesus when they receive him. He also said there are so many consecrated souls who lose their enthusiasm of falling in love with the Lord and have made their vocation an occupation, a profession, to which nothing more is given except that which is demanded of one, but without feeling. Then the Lord spoke to me about the fruits that must come from each communion that we take. It does happen that there are people who receive the Lord daily but do not change their lives. They spend many hours in prayer and do many works, but their life does not go on transforming and a life that does not transform cannot bear fruits for the Lord. The marriage received in the Eucharist should bear the fruits of conversion in us and fruits of charity towards our brothers and sisters. We the laity have a very important role in our church. We do not have the right to be silent because the Lord has sent us out, as all the baptized to go forth and announce the good news. We do not have the right to absorb all this knowledge and not share it with others, and to allow our brothers to die of hunger when we have so much bread in our hands. We cannot watch our church crumble as we stay comfortable in our parishes and homes, receiving and receiving so much from the Lord. His word, the homilies of the priests, the pilgrimages, the mercy of God in the sacrament of reconciliation, the marvelous union with the nourishment of communion, the talks of preachers. In other words, we are receiving so much and we do not have the courage to leave our comfort zone and go to a jail, to a correctional institution, to speak to the neediest, to go to tell them not to give up, that they were born Catholic and that their church needs them, there, suffering, because their suffering will serve to redeem others, because that sacrifice will gain for them eternal life. We are not capable of going where the terminally ill are in the hospitals, and by praying the Divine Mercy Chaplet, helping them with our prayers during that time of struggle between good and evil to free them from the snares and temptations of the devil. Every dying person has fear, and just taking their hands and talking to them about the love of God and the marvel that awaits them in heaven next to Jesus and Mary, next to their departed ones, gives them comfort. The eye in which we currently live does not allow us to be indifferent. We must be an extension of the hands of our priests and go where they cannot reach. But for this, we need courage. We must receive Jesus, live with Jesus, nourish ourselves with Jesus. We are afraid to commit ourselves a little more. And when the Lord says, First seek the kingdom of God, and the rest will be added unto you. He says it all, brothers and sisters. It means to seek the kingdom of God, by all possible means and with all means, to open your hands in order to receive everything in addition. This is because he is the master who pays the best, the only one who is attentive to your smallest needs. Brothers and sisters, thank you for allowing me to carry out the mission that was entrusted to me, that of having these pages read to you. The next time you attend Holy Mass,
please live the Holy Mass. I know the Lord will fulfill for you this promise that your Mass will never again be the same. And when you receive Him, love Him. Experience the sweetness of feeling yourself resting against the folds of His side, pierced for you in order to leave you His church and His mother, to open for you the doors of His Father's house. Experience this so that you are able to feel for yourself His merciful love by means of this testimony and try to reciprocate with your childlike love. God bless you this Easter. Your sister in the living Jesus, Kathalina, lay missionary of the Eucharistic Heart of Jesus, apostolate of the new evangelization. That Mass is not the physical things you see. There are a lot of spiritual and invisible things happening at Mass. And as Catholics, we're supposed to be in spirit, follow all these events, just as God intended them to. The worship of the Catholic Church is not learned. It has been handed over to us. And we're supposed to hand it over to the next generation, unsoiled and uncompromised. 